Welcome back to another beautiful day in the land of music. My name is Douglas and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about using the M-Audio Oxygen Pro Mini without a DAW. And you may be saying, what? Why would you buy a USB controller that has all this DAW capability and not use it with a DAW to record songs on your computer? But there are a couple of instances where you might get a controller for something other than using it with your DAW. Especially if you're just starting out and you're wanting to learn music, you want to learn how to play the piano, you want to learn how to play synthesizer sounds, you just you want to get started into music and you don't have a lot of money to spend. A controller is a great way to get started because a lot of controllers come with included sounds. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you what the M-Audio Oxygen Pro Mini comes with for virtual instruments that stand by themselves. They're called standalone virtual instruments. You don't need a DAW or anything like that to use them. And I think it's a great example of just getting started in music, buying a sub $200 controller and being able to get started with a bunch of different sounds right out of the gate as long as you have a computer. So most of us have computers. If you have to go buy a computer, then you're gonna end up being way more expensive than if you had just bought a keyboard with sounds built into it. But the other scenario where you might buy a USB controller like the Oxygen Pro Mini is if you're trying to control a sound module or another synthesizer or keyboard with it. And so you'll see people using this in live settings or even in the studio where maybe I've got a keyboard with a really great piano sound on it and I just want to have maybe an 88 key controller like the Hammer 88 Pro plugged into that to control it so I have weighted keys on maybe a keyboard that has synth action keys. So that's another scenario but I really think for those of you who are just starting out and you're looking for a cheap option to get started and learn how to do music plus have the ability to jump into recording in DAWs later on, a controller like the M-Audio Oxygen Pro Mini is perfect for that situation. So what I want to do is jump over to the computer, show you what comes included with the M-Audio Oxygen Pro Mini for virtual instruments that stand by themselves without a DAW, and then talk a little bit about as you transition into a DAW, which DAW you should transition into, kind of talk a little bit about that. I'm going to demo some of the sounds in the virtual instruments as well, so let's jump over to the computer, let's take a look together. So over here on the computer, the first thing you're going to want to do after you purchase your controller is to go ahead and register the controller. The serial number is on the bottom of the controller. Go ahead and register that with M-Audio. That way you're able to download the M-Audio software and virtual instruments and all of that. Once you've done that, go ahead and download the M-Audio Software Manager. This is going to give you access to all of the different virtual instruments and DAWs that come included with this controller. I'll just run through these really quickly. So up at the top here, we have Hybrid 3, which is synth sounds, Mini Grand, which is grand piano and piano sounds, and Velvet, which is electric piano sounds. Then we've got apps. So we've got MPC Beats, which is kind of a stripped back version of the Akai MPC2 software. And if you've watched my MPC Studio videos, you'll see me use MPC2. MPC Beats is going to be similar to that. It's just got fewer tracks that you can record at a time, but the functionality is pretty similar. It also comes with Ableton Live Lite and Pro Tools First Edition. We're going to talk more about those later in this video. Then you have the preset editor, and then you've got a bunch of MPC sound packs that can be used with the MPC Beats software. And then at the very bottom, you have plugin only versions. Now, these would be if you're using it with a DAW, which is not the intention of this video. So I'm going to scroll back to the very top and talk about these top three instruments here. So what these do is they install to your computer as standalone instruments. And the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to open one of these up and just kind of give you a quick rundown of the sounds that come included with these instruments. And you can use these without installing any of the apps or any of the software DAWs that come with this. You don't need any of those. Just go ahead and download these three instruments. You are going to need an iLock account. So go ahead and create an iLock account and download the iLock license manager. That's where the licenses are going to be stored for these three instruments. Go ahead and do that. If you do want instructions on how to do that, just click on product activation code. It's going to give you instructions on how to go do that. So we're going to open up Hybrid 3. Click on open. It says Hybrid 3 is now launching. And here we go. We've got Hybrid 3. And so if I play my controller, 
you can tell that right away I'm able to play this instrument without a DAW, without anything else. If for some reason it's not playing when you're playing your controller, make sure your controller is plugged in, which is gonna automatically turn it on with the Oxygen Pro Mini. Make sure it's plugged in before you open this. If for some reason it still doesn't work, go up to the little gear icon and make sure that these active MIDI inputs are all checked. That way, this is gonna receive signal from the controller. One other thing while I'm in the settings here is this audio device type. If I drop this down, you'll notice that Windows Audio is the default. So if you don't have an audio interface, you can just use Windows Audio, and that's gonna work fine for these instruments, these virtual instruments that come included with the controller. You could download a third-party virtual audio driver like ASIO. You can find a link to that in the description below. That may work better for you. Depending on how powerful your computer is, you may experience what we call latency. And that is a delay between when you hit the key and when you hear the sound. So mess around with these options. If you hit the key and there's a long delay, you can try downloading the ASIO driver or you may end up needing to get an audio interface because that is gonna end up reducing that latency. You can just buy a cheap one. Any of the smaller Focusrite ones would be a really good beginner's option for an audio interface and it would give you the ability to plug a microphone in as well. One other thing here is I've got my output set to the headphones. If you're using an audio interface, you're gonna select the audio interface up here, such as Focusrite, and then your output's gonna be the headphones or the main out for the audio interface. Down here under audio buffer size, this is also gonna help with that latency, but this plays into the quality of the sound that you're playing. So let's bump this way up to 1024, and let's play this sound again. I don't have any latency still. Let me see if I bump this way up, if I get any. There's a little bit there. So I touch the key and there's just a tiny hesitation. It's really not noticeable for you guys, but for me playing, I notice a little bit of a hesitation there. So I'm gonna lower this number down to 512. You could lower it down to 256. And you may see a little bit of a lower quality sound. I don't really hear any difference there, but that could reduce your latency as well. So I'm gonna keep it on 512 because with my laptop I'm running this on, I don't have any issues. So that's a couple of tips to help reduce that delay between when you press the key and when you hear the sound. Again, it's gonna drastically depend on what laptop or computer you're using with this. These instruments tend to be pretty lightweight, so you won't really notice that. Maybe with the Grand, Mini Grand plugin, you might notice a little bit. So let's get back to the virtual instrument. So Hybrid has a ton of different sounds. And you can access those by moving back and forth with this back and forth buttons here, or just clicking on the default text here. This says C settings menu. Just click on any of this area here and that's gonna open up the menu. And as you can see, there's 23 different categories of sounds. And then within each category, there's anywhere from 50 to uh, over a hundred different sounds within that category. So let's just grab maybe an arpeggio, a simple saw. So right away, I have access to a ton, hundreds and hundreds of different sounds, soft pads, Now one quick tip I wanted to mention is something that's gonna really help improve your playing and improve just the overall sound, especially as you get into the pianos and stuff is pick yourself up a simple damper or sustain pedal. I've got a Yamaha FC4A that works great with all my controllers. It plugs into the back of the controller. The Oxygen Pro Mini does have a sustain pedal port. Go pick up one of these. They're maybe $25 US, really not that expensive. And it's really gonna help you play better because not only are you gonna learn how to use a sustain pedal as you play the pianos and the synth sounds, but it allows you to take your hands off the keys. I can play a synth sound, hold down the sustain pedal, 
And then I can go in here and start to tweak some of these parameters and tweak that sound. So as you can see, there are a ton of different variables that can be changed here. And I'm not gonna get into a whole detailed video uh, today in the Hybrid 3 synth engine, but I will in a future video, so be on the lookout for that. Let's go check out a couple of the other instruments that come included for free with the Oxygen Pro Mini. So let's open up the Mini Grand and take a look at that next. It's gonna say Mini Grand is launching and there's this little red bar here. Wait till that's loaded before you play this. So that's loading up the Mini Grand sound into the RAM of your computer, which is the temporary memory that it stores things. It's gonna play a lot better. So now we can go ahead What's great about this Mini Grand plugin is we have all of these settings up here that we could change just by dragging our mouse on these knobs. Or we can go down again, same as the synth, we can click on this bar that says default and that opens up a menu of 30 different presets for this Grand Piano plugin. Let's go ahead and hit the Atmo Piano for the atmospheric. We can leverage the octave up and down buttons if we want an octave lower. Come back up to an octave higher. And you can press both of the octave buttons to reset back to octave zero. We can even add in reverb into here. So mess around with all of that. Obviously that's way too much reverb, but again, a lot of different sounds that you can play around with here. Let's close that and check out Velvet, which is the electric piano. This comes with a ton of presets. Again, we can click on the default bar and open that up. And we have five different categories with, it looks like 70 presets per category. So just the default one. Let's go check out a couple of the presets here. Again, be on the lookout, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss future videos where I dive into each of these in detail and demo more of the sounds. So again, if you are just starting out and you're just trying to learn how to play the keyboard, this is a great option. Go ahead and download those, they're free. They come with a ton of sounds. And if you wanna get more into learning how to record on the computer, you've got some great options here. And I just wanted to touch on these real quick in this video. MPC Beats is gonna be pretty cool because you're gonna be able to leverage the pads here, the drum pads, using these MPC sound packs to build either your own drum programs or use some of the presets that come with this controller for free to make your own beats. And MPC Beats is a pretty slick interface and I'll make some videos on that coming soon. Ableton Live Lite is a good option if you wanna get into Ableton Live, the full version. If you're moving towards playing in a live setting, Ableton Live really can't be beat when it comes to that. Uh, main stage is used quite a bit, but Ableton Live is gonna give you a lot more flexibility. Pro Tools, if you're kinda of gearing towards more studio production, most mainstream studios are gonna be using the full version of Pro Tools, so it's a good idea. Maybe in that case, if you wanna become an engineer or a producer, to get started with Pro Tools First M Audio Edition. One thing to keep in mind though, with Pro Tools First Edition, which is the free version included with the controller, is that the DAW controls don't work with this version of Pro Tools. So the only thing you'll be able to do in there compared to Ableton Live and MPC Beats where you'll be able to use the transport controls and DAW controls, the only thing you'll be able to do in Pro Tools First Edition is play the pads and the keys for the notes. So just keep that in mind. It is still a good DAW to learn if you're wanting to move into the full version of it because the full version is great and very capable, but just one thing to keep in mind with the free version there. So those are your options from a DAW perspective when you're ready to move into that. But again, 
if you're just getting started and you want to just play the controller without figuring the whole DAW side out, go ahead, make sure you download those instruments. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you're just getting started, you're looking at maybe buying the M Audio Oxygen Pro Mini or you just bought it, you're learning how to get started in music and you want to just jump right in, not have to worry about downloading a DAW, worrying about licensing and figuring out how to connect the controller and all of that. All you got to do is just pull up these standalone instruments and get playing because really that's why we do music is so we can play and express ourselves creatively. So hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions around anything that I talked about in this video, throw them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Don't forget to subscribe because I'll be coming out with some other videos around the M Audio Oxygen Pro and some of the other controllers I've got pretty soon here. So stay tuned for those. Make sure you like this video if you found it helpful. Thanks for watching. Stay inspired and keep making that music.